Good. <clears throat> My new sponsor is Caffeine Lab. By the way, let just... me move the sound line. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, coming in for this. Uh, really appreciate it. No um, I'm ready if you're ready. I'm ready. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to another episode of the Mo Show podcast. Um, I have kept in uh, Jamal Bajandu. I have been a fan of uh, of this football player for the longest time since his days in Ittihad. I thought uh, that it had signed Puyol the first time I saw him. <laughs> then I found out we had someone even better than him. Uh, then he moved to Shabab and now plays in Hail. Captain Jamal, thank you so much, honestly, for coming on the show. Honestly, thank you for having me. Much, much appreciated. How have you been? Uh, I've been very well, thank you. How have you been? Alhamdulillah, good. Um, what is it now? 57 episodes in, in less than two years. Uh, never thought I'd reach this height, but um, but here we are. Never thought I'd be given an opportunity to meet people like you, like Prince Abdelaziz, like many other people that I have met. So um, I'm enjoying myself. That's amazing. It's an absolute privilege for me to come here. I absolutely love what you're doing. Thank you so much. Can um, can you just give us a bit of a background on uh, your upbringing days? Uh, where was most of your childhood spent? Uh, just draw a little picture for us. So I was uh, born in the UK, born in Bournemouth, actually. Um, and then when I was about one or two between those, uh, I moved to Saudi. Uh, my father's from Saudi Arabia, obviously. Um, and yeah, honestly, my life since that age has been half Saudi Arabia, half UK. Mostly academic year was in Saudi Arabia and then I'd move home for three months of the summer where the rest of my mother's family is. In Bournemouth? In Bournemouth, yeah. yeah. Uh, so because I followed you on Snapchat for the longest time and um, I, I'm a big fan of, of the UK and England. Forgive uh, any English accent that might be put on during this episode. <laughs> so whenever you're there, I just salivate over. I'm like, oh, there is the UK in the summer with blue skies. It's time to go to yeah, London. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's a part of the year that you really look forward to as well. Honestly, no. The, for me, there's nowhere like Bournemouth, especially in the summer. Yeah, it's on the coast, right? It's by... South coast. Yeah. South coast. Fantastic. Yeah. Next to Brighton? Uh, it's quite close to Brighton, but it's probably closer to Southampton. Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, just before we started rolling, I said, I don't think I have met anyone whose English is as good as his <laughs> Arabic. Do you favor a language of the two because you speak both flawlessly, mashallah, Alec? Um Honestly, no. I think I think they're both equal for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to make me blush with all these compliments. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> time to talk about how good of a football player you are. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, when Speaking of football, at what age did you, did you feel that, you know what, this is something that uh, I can go all the way and, and play professionally in? Well, I mean, the love for the sport, I, I can't remember when that happened. My entire family is uh, completely into, in love with football, especially my father. But uh, when I realized I was good enough to be professional, probably not until my first professional match. Um, wow. Yeah, that far ahead. It's honestly, it's such a pipe dream for how many thousands, maybe millions of boys around the world. Um, and yeah, I was just so blessed, alhamdulillah, that it came true for me. Mm -hmm. So you started off um, professionally in, in England at, at Bournemouth FC. Yes. Um, and uh, what was that experience like, though, you know, be being professional that first year in Bournemouth? Uh, well, I played in Saudi Arabia uh, prior to that. And, um, and then my first year professional, I wanted to start in Europe. It was just like a personal goal for me. So when I went there, um, probably one of the most things that stood out for me was their professionalism out there. It's just completely insane compared to what we had as youngsters playing, because I used to play in, in Itihad as a youngster. And yeah, it just everyone there is so professional, so dedicated. I mean, I remember looking at 14, 15 year olds that had more discipline than me. And I was just so impressed by that. And I think I took a lot of that with me that I, um, I believe helped me um, with my career. Mm -hmm. How demanding is it though? I mean, between training and eating right, you can't put a foot wrong. Mm. The temptations are all around you. Is Was that one of the hardest things, being disciplined? Um, well, at the end of the day, we are human footballers. So we, yeah, we're not robots. We make mistakes. I mean, we eat pizza, we go to McDonald's, whatever. It's completely fine. Uh, but the majority of the time, I'd say 90% plus, we have to be very 
careful with what we do, what we eat, how we sleep, because the next day you have to put 110% in every training session. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you did a year in Bournemouth and then you decided to come to Ittihad and you joined uh, the, the youth Ittihad, I think it was under 17s. Um, no, actually. So I was in the under, well, from the 13 until 19, I was in Ittihad. Wow. And then I moved to AFC Bournemouth and played my first professional year there. Okay. And, and then you came back here. And, and then I came back to Ittihad first team. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, so between Ittihad and 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 uh, and Shabab and now Ta'i, you know, you covered uh, the Saudi league pretty well. But you did a year, you did a year in in Croatia as well. Yes, I did. What prompted you to go there? That's off the beaten path for you. Yeah. Um, so obviously, after playing in Ittihad for quite a long time, it was about six, seven years. Um, during that time, I always had this personal goal to play in Europe. Just I don't know, almost. It was like a personal, I wanted to prove to myself that I could play in a first European league. And um, yeah, I just had this opportunity where someone rang me up one day um, and said to me, look, there's a there's a Croatian team in, in the first Croatian league that is interested in signing you. And I just thought it was crazy initially and like kind of thought, no, that's not happening. Um, but then I kind of like. Why not? Uh, yeah, exactly. I thought, why not? And just, I just thought, you know what, I'll, I'll go for it. It's something I've always wanted to do. And yeah, and I went and did it. Um, and it went it went pretty well for me. I, I got what I wanted from that experience. Completely different. Do they even speak English? They, oh, <laughs> I mean, now looking back at it, it would have been better for me if I went somewhere that speaks English. Okay. They don't speak English. Mm -hmm. um, and the mentality is completely alien to me. So it was literally like when someone says, mm. for my gun. Yeah, that was it for me. But certainly a uh, learning experience. You know, you oh, massively, massively. And um, yeah, like I said, uh, I, I really genuinely believe I got what I wanted from that experience. So I'm happy I took that decision. Excellent. Good stuff. We learn from being uncomfortable and it was probably uncomfortable for you know, We definitely grow from that. Um, you played with some stars, all right, some legends of the game in, in, in your time. Is um, is there one, not one, just one that comes to the top of your mind who you can recall that had the biggest impact on your career? Honestly, there's so many amazing players, but I normally like to watch specific players and almost take parts of their game and adapt it into mine. Um, top of my head, obviously, Mohamed Noor is one of the first people that come to mind. Then we've got um, Carlos Villanueva. Oh, yeah. Who was, yeah, he was really good. Yeah. San Martian, if you remember him. Of course. Oh, class, that man. <laughs> uh, and recently, probably Ever Banega from Shabab. He is just another level. Striker? Uh, he's a midfielder. Midfielder, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the game's changed a lot in Saudi. I remember back in the day, only two foreigners per team. Now you look at the the Saudi league. There's almost more foreigners than than, than Saudi players. Yeah. Do you do you like where the where the league is right now? Where it's going in terms of watchability? So, if I'm talking about watchability and level, uh, the league is just Fire. so much further ahead than everyone in the same region, maybe in Asia. Mm. So, and I definitely think the seven foreign decision has had that impact in the Saudi league. It's, it's amazing. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate for the Saudi players. Obviously, it's a lot more difficult for us to play. Yeah. We have seven foreigners on the pitch now. Seven. Yeah. Even in Thai? Every team. Every team has seven. Every team. So that's why uh, even the small teams now are playing against Hilal, Nasr, Ahli, Ittihad, of course. And uh, the bigger teams are struggling with them. Wow. So, yeah. It's, it's just made the league so much stronger and tougher than it's ever been. More competitive as well. Very, yeah, very. It's like in England, 19 v 20 is, is, a, is, a, is a watchable game. Over, over here, they're like the, the two teams at the bottom of the, that's a good game to watch. Well, exactly. Standards. Exactly, are, the standard in every team is just, yeah. I mean, you can tell in the Asian Cup now, Saudi teams are just slaying everyone else. Yeah. You saw Hilal Chelsea, and that shouldn't yeah. even been a win to Chelsea. And I'm a Chelsea fan. <laughs> no, that was that was a game for Saudis to be proud of. It's come a long way. Yeah, come a long way. Um, are you happy with uh, finishing off your career in Saudi, or if an opportunity comes uh, to go to another league, would you welcome it? Um, honestly, it depends on the situation. Um, obviously, I have family in the UK, so playing in the UK maybe would be 
something nice, but I'm very comfortable in Saudi Arabia and the Saudi league. I'm happy. Um, it's very competitive, mm -hmm. like we said. And um, yeah, it's a privilege for me to stay in it for as long as possible. Yeah. Um, you had some moments in, in, in your career. Is there one that stands out for you uh, that was your best moment? Can you paint that picture for us? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been asked this question before and it, it's always the first one that comes to mind. It's uh, my first championship with Ittihad. It was Crown Prince Cup against uh, Nasr in uh, Riyadh. And I just, it was my first championship ever on a professional level. Mm -hmm. And I just remember as soon as the ref like whistled uh, the final whistle I was I just fell on the floor and looked up to the sky and was just like I, I can't believe this is happening and the feeling is just ah, you feel like you're floating honestly yes it all pays off sorry it all pays off it really really does yeah. it really does how physical is the sport do you feel banged up like the next morning are you in pain I mean I'm on ibuprofen right now but because <laughs> <laughs> it's physical sport huh yeah like you you eat an elbow or two or you you know you're knocked on the ground it's 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 more the impact especially if you've had quite a, a long career um the impact it has on your knees your ankles just walking around in the shops these days yeah. it's not that easy um yeah it's a very very physically demanding sport do you spend more time stretching and getting yourself into into game ready mode a lot more icing as uh, you know as you hit 30. Yes, um, but that's when injury prevention comes in. So we do a lot more injury prevention than we ever did. I mean, I remember when I was 22, what is warm up to me? I just run onto the pitch and start shooting balls. <laughs> but now um, I have to like plan my day, make sure I have like good sleep, eat well, yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah, it takes a lot of maintenance. For many people, football is like a dream job. Um, would you agree with that or are there some less glamorous parts to the profession? I completely agree. Even after all this time it is an absolute dream job and I'm absolutely blessed um, to be in the position I am in. Um, but there are a lot more uh, not so glamorous, like you said, aspects of uh, being a professional footballer than people believe. What well, are the less glamorous parts? Less glamorous. So obviously uh, it takes up maybe most of your life. Um, so obviously every match I have to travel away. Uh, sometimes you have to play uh, abroad. So you're away from your family a lot of the time. And um, you miss, you miss weddings. For example, I missed one of my sister's weddings uh, because it is a very demanding, you have to be there at this time type of job, which there are no excuses for in football. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's one of the top ones. Mm -hmm. um... But you, whenever you're out in public, I would imagine many people, especially in the Western region, um, because we know Etihad fans are, are what they're like. Uh, <laughs> are you able to to walk out, you know, to, to a mall or, or a restaurant without people crowding you? I mean, um, look, for uh, everyone, everyone's different with regards to that. For me, I actually don't mind it because I, I believe that if the fans love you, that's that's an absolute blessing from Allah. And, um, yeah, I appreciate it and welcome it. Obviously, some people are quite handsy, so it, it gets it gets a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. Or when I'm with my family and they really don't respect uh, personal that, that's space. That's annoying. That's annoying if you're with the family. I, I mean, I, I understand where they're coming from. They're they're excited. They're whatever. But but at the same time, it is my family, so it's a it's a little bit tricky to navigate that. But um, yeah, no, I I absolutely love the fans. Yeah. You know, in the beginning when I said, you know, you got to be disciplined, you got to, uh, you know, eat the right things, sleep the correct amount, work out, even on days you don't want to work out. What does a typical uh, diet look for you on, on in season uh, on a typical day? I probably have the most boring diet out of all of the players I know. Um, so literally every morning I have uh, Greek yogurt and oats and that's it. And then fast forward a little bit to the afternoon i'd have a black coffee straight mm -hmm. no sugar no sugar no milk nothing pleasant oh you're disciplined <laughs> and then uh yeah that's that's typically my pre-workout the the black coffee and then i'd go to training which is normally around three four o'clock attendance finish training protein shake of how, long, how long does training go for i mean training's typically about an hour and a half, an hour 40, okay. but we're at the club for about three hours a day. Okay. Um, 
obviously you have to sign in and mm -hmm. stretch after stretch and whatnot. Ice yeah, and all that. Of course. So protein shake straight after training. Um and then give it maybe an hour or so and go and just have a massive meal. Um, end of day, towards the end of the day. Toward, yeah, towards about eight o'clock, nine o'clock, not too late. Um, and then, yeah, just before just before bed, I normally have a protein shake quick and yeah, mm. hit the sack. Eight, nine hours? Uh, eight minimum. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a heavy sleeper. Yeah. yeah. Um, congratulations on being a father. Thank you so much. Is it last year or the year before? It was 2021, April. April, so almost, yeah. uh, well, it's a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, a year plus. How has that uh, changed your life or perspective on things? Oh, honestly, it's, uh, it's just changed everything. It's just changed including everything. your sleep schedule. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's probably the least part I loved. But yeah, it's changed everything. Yeah, now I know what you mean, that if you're on the road and you have to, you know, be away for a day or two, it just, it must really frustrate you. Oh, and it's, it's terrible. So, um, yeah, uh, I think the hardest part of it now is being away from my daughter, definitely. Yeah. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Best advice anyone's ever given you in life or football? Something you remember? I've Yeah, I've, I've had so many amazing people in my life with so many amazing things that they've... Uh, shared with me but probably the most recent piece of advice that has really stuck with me is some and i don't even think they they knew what they were saying it just came out randomly um was if you're going to go for something never think about what's the worst case scenario and how to avoid it always think what is the best case scenario and do everything you can to make that the outcome wow yeah it's powerful honestly it really stuck with me like optimism being yeah. optimistic about things definitely yeah 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 wow because many many times you we go into things thinking oh my god how how what what would failure look like you know how how bad are we going to look if we fail yeah uh, with a bit of optimism you can really you know go a long way a hundred percent honestly it has a massive massive effect just like you said the way you're thinking about it yeah massive effect I think it was Seneca who said we suffer more in imagination than we do in reality. Yeah, we do. We Before do. an exam, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and then you get like a B. Yeah, and you're like, why the hell was I stressing? For yeah, yeah, that? yeah. <laughs> Any regrets, Captain Jamal? Um, I believe everyone has certain regrets in their personal lives, but with regards to football, I honestly don't have any regrets i just think that every step i've had was a learning curve mm -hmm. and i feel blessed for everything that's happened for me yeah is the best moment of your day um as a professional footballer is it when you walk onto the pitch and you're about to play and you hear the crowd in the background does that really get your 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 you get psyched up for it i mean yeah walk playing with with fans i've tried both with fans without fans and playing with fans is just it's a completely different experience you feel you almost get this different persona and uh and yeah and you just you're a different person you just honestly sometimes you shine sometimes you don't but when you do shine it's one of the best feelings in the world i saw your goal for party recently okay all right um scoring how do you feel when you do a win is great but a win in a in a game that you scored in does yeah. that have is that like a cherry on top uh, it's a bit more than a cherry on top it's like a whole yeah it's a whole dessert but um feels good doesn't it? it's amazing yeah, it's, contributing yeah. to that yeah and then you have all your like mates running up to you like cheering with you is just oh yeah. it's just an amazing feeling it's awesome especially when the ball hits the net it's, yeah it's a special <laughs> yeah, feeling yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I've been playing goalkeeper all my life, so you know, I try to avoid that sensation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uh, hearing like stories of of people who retired. Yeah. Um, uh, the one thing they say is that their career went by so quickly, uh, and if only they could savor it. Um, do you feel like the last ten years, from twenty to thirty, did it did it go quickly, or have you been like savoring? It's gone so quickly. It has. I uh, mean, it has its stresses. Football's very very stressful but it, it 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 literally flashes by and um i don't think any footballer ever wants their career to end yeah yeah so would you want to be involved in football in some capacity in future 
I mean, I've I've been asked this question before. I don't think I'm a I'm a quite a coach type of person. I'm definitely a player, uh, but things change. So I'm I never know what the future holds. Yeah. I know you have a flight, and I'm gonna just have one more thing I'm gonna throw at you. That's fine. Um, if you can go back in time uh, to have a word with young Jamal just before he entered juniors at had at 12 or 13. Yeah. Um, if you had the ability to do that and whisper something in your ear back then as an advice to carry, what would that whisper be? Uh, wow. Um, confidence, 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 confidence is the most powerful thing in, in, in anything really, but in football especially. Believing in yourself and actually being confident in what you're doing and not letting anything shake that, it has an almost magical effect on your performance as a footballer. Did you feel that maybe perhaps one day you not being confident in yourself led to not 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 so good of a game that you played in? 100%, many a times. Really? Sometimes one thing goes wrong in the football, uh, in the football match and it just shifts you to a completely different, um, kind of mentality and it of course it affects your game it's a mind game huh it 100 percent is definitely confidence is really what what you would tell your younger self huh? yeah be confident be confident believe in yourself yeah. and just give it everything you got fantastic yeah well good luck with the rest of the season i think you have four or five games left. five more games five more games yeah then you're going to go to the UK and have some much deserved time off. <laughs> Definitely and straight then to the UK. Back for next season again. Thanks again for coming on. Um, Thank you for having me. Giving honestly. me a bit of your time. And um, we're cheering for you. We love your game. And, Thank uh, you. Always be fans. Thank you very Thanks much. Again, Thank you. Cheers. <clears throat>